we are looking for a man he said and i sat on my throne and i wanted a man to stand in the gap and he said i found none and the endless expectation of the creature does not wait for the manifestation of god it is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god the time has come for you to stop playing religion and take your destiny in your hand One organist and one human being in this choir can play and turn the whole world upside down. Just one organ. The organist. Listen, David alone took music, took a harp and changed the whole world because he had an impact on a king. Now, so here is Jesus talking to his disciples and he said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and what you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. That means when you stand on earth, anything you do has the ability to affect heaven. Here are people sitting on earth and they are waiting for heaven to move before they move. What you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. And what you lose on earth shall have been losing heaven. And the word to bind is the word which means to fasten with chains, to forbid and to, for, to prohibit. Now, keep in mind to forbid and to prohibit. Because you see, the word to bind is so religious, it is so cumbersome, it is so difficult to apply that it has misled many people. I want you to turn to somebody and say, the word bind has misled you. Because Pastor John, when you say, shall we bind the devil? You see people, we bind the devil. We bind him. We bind him. We bind him. Very soon I will show you, binding doesn't mean what you think. Binding is not so difficult like the way you think. No, binding the devil and binding evil is very easy. It's not the way you think. I, I will get there. And when I get to this thing and I don't finish, I will just stop it and continue it another time because I don't want to rush the issue of binding and losing at all. Binding and losing. And to lose means to release. It means to unbind and it means to untie. And you see the Christians again and we lose it. And we lose it. They, they go into a gym immediately. We are losing. We are losing. And then when you say we are binding, they are, they are tying up. Now, so he said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall have been losing heaven. Now, listen to me. A human being on earth, you have a lot of authority. Don't ever take yourself for granted. Daniel was a young man in the land of Babylon and Daniel went into the period of fasting and prayer. The man was fasting and praying until the angel Gabriel in the human form was released by the prince of Persia to bring answers to his supplication. Now watch this. An angel is arrested and in time to take the prayer of a human being to release the angel. The angel that is going to help you is coming. God does send the angel. But if you don't fast and pray, the angel will be arrested in Wale Wale. Some of you, your angel got to Wale Wale and stayed there. And you know what? Instead of fasting for 21 days, you fasted for only 10 days. So the angel is still in the counter back in Wale Wale. And you are sitting there saying, God, God hasn't answered my prayer. I'm waiting for God. And the Lord has not done this. And God said, you know what? You should have prayed for 21 days until that angel is released. The, the prophet Elisha told the king, he said, shoot the arrow on the floor, on the ground. The man shot on the ground. One, two, three, and stopped. And the man of God said, you know what? You should have shot five or six times. But because you did it only three times, your victory is limited. But if you had done it five or six times, you would have had perpetual victory. That means your victory depends on you yourself. Your victory depends on yourself. It depends on what you do. It doesn't depend on your pastor. It doesn't depend on your prophet. It doesn't depend on your apostle. It doesn't depend on your teacher. Watch this. Can I sound this? Can I sound this? It doesn't even depend on God. Where you are now does not depend on God. Anything God should do for you, he has done it already. Jesus
Jesus had died. He was buried. He rose from the dead. He sat at the right hand of the throne of God. Far above principalities and powers. He gave you the Holy Ghost. He gave you the power of the blood. And gave you the power of the name of Jesus. And you are still crying out to God. To do what? What should God do with you again? By his stripes you were healed. So if you are still sick. What has God got to do with that? chastisement of your peace was upon him and they took the crown of thorns and put it on his head to give you peace you are still crying unto him peace on your name you rise from the dead for you he rose from the dead defeat principalities and powers he defeated them sat in the heavenly places at the right hand of the throne of God the Father and God guess what he raised you up together with him and made you sit with him in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and you are still weak what should God do with you again listen some of us are an embarrassment to the kingdom Some of you sometimes you make God put his head on the ground and when Satan stands to accuse God doesn't know what to do. I know God knows what to do all the time. But you, you, you just render God. You just render God. I don't know what you render God to be. So there is Daniel. And behold an hand touched me. And it is believed that this is, this is the hand. This is the hand of the angel Gabriel. And hand touched me and set me upon my knees which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me oh daniel a man greatly beloved daniel a man greatly beloved understand the words that i speak unto you and stand upright for unto thee am i now sent and when he has spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Oh, Jehovah. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for your words. You see, it was your prayer that brought me. It was your prayer that brought me. You started fasting, you started praying, and it was your prayer that brought you. That is why I tell people, whether we like it or not, you know, I, I tell the people in Bogatanga, I say, whether they like it or not, it is the prayer of the believers that is bringing development on the land. The believers are praying, the believers are talking to God, and their prayer is bringing angels. Am I talking to somebody at all? Your prayer in your family is changing a lot of things. He said, and I am come for your words. Look at verse number 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. He said, I was praying. I was coming. And then the prince of Persia held me. And because you kept praying, Michael, one of the princes, came and helped me. And he has released me. And verse number 14 I am now come to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter days for the vision is yet for many days. He said, you know what? I was arrested by an angel. But I was, arre I was arrested by the prince of Persia. But because you continued praying, I was released. Ladies and gentlemen, even your, your prayers empower even angels. Your prayer releases angels. Your fasting and prayer is very important. You, you know, people, when God gave us the right of redemption, the right of redemption also went with the responsibility of redemption. And God is saying, you know what? I want to do many things on earth, but I need your cooperation. I need you to be involved. I need you to pray. I need you to bind. I need you to lose. Then the thing will be done and the thing will be performed. So we see a human being who can pray until an angel is released. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Tonight, may somebody go home and pray until your angel is released. Release the angel of your destiny. Release the angel of your future. Release the angel who will bring you 
that breakthrough anybody clapping your hands that thing is happening to you in the name of Jesus Christ now binding and losing is so important Jesus Christ teaching his disciples one day told them something he said but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God then the kingdom of God is come to you or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man then he will spoil his goods everybody say bind the strong man come on shout it bind the strong man and this is where I want to talk about the ignorance now how do you bind the strong man maybe you haven't thought about it before how do I bind the strong man I cannot I, can, I will show you how to bind the strong man from the example of Jesus but let me start with how we bind the strong man oh shakados kekabaha hey we bind the devil we bind the devil we bind the devil now your padlock which you use to lock a door when you lock a door with a padlock and you are going to open do you hit the padlock you take a key and you open so you bind with a key he said i give you the keys of the kingdom of god that whatsoever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven you use a key and listen the proof that what you are using is not a key is how difficult it is when you see the thing is very difficult it means you are it's a wrong padlock or a wrong key because you know what ladies and gentlemen it was if it was the right key when you put it in you just hear care the amount of your shouting alone means you have in you you are afraid you ask my wife she will tell you i do a lot of spiritual warfare this woman i don't know all the years you've known me whether you've ever seen me in a panic mood no 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 i, I don't it's not my style you may even listen one day just before we traveled to america i was lying on the bed a principality thick and tall i looked on my shoulder and this let me see, i was lying like this i looked on my shoulder my left and this principality thick and tall the waist was through our ceiling I was watching TV at that time. I don't know whether it was football or something they were doing or whatever. I was just watching. This thing appeared in front of me. I felt the sensation and the movement. I looked and this, I just did this. I saw the thing fall. Bam! I continued with what I'm doing. And I just told mommy, I said, Pearl, I just knocked the principality down. But there was not like, hey, children come! Children come! The devil is a liar and so is his mother-in-law. What is all this noise going to give to you? <laughs> Look at Jesus Christ. One day standing with his disciples said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Cool. Listen, may God give you cool Christianity. Cool Christianity. You the rush. This Wahala Christianity you are going to carry when he said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest some people their prayer and their fasting is so difficult that sometimes they go and hire prophets and give them milo to drink and fast for them so they say man of god i'm giving you some milo or i'm giving you a seed of three thousand ghana you fast and pray for me so that i get the miracle but I can't pray for myself. And that's because, you know what? They think the whole thing is so difficult. And the pastors sometimes make it difficult, make it look difficult for you so that you can depend on them. Oh yeah, you know, as soon as you sit down and describe your problem, then the pastor will throw his head. Sadi away dear, emuye dee. Emuye dee, emuye dee, emuye dee, emuye dee. 
we must go into the third hell. I know the third heavens, but these people have the third hell. You need about seven men of God. And then you two you are sitting down. So by the time you are going, you have no faith. You can't believe anything. You can't. Now, so Jesus is saying, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And he said, you cannot enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except you first bind the strong man. That means you cannot enter a strong man's house and loose those that he has bound, unless you first of all bind the strong man. But if you want to know how to bind the strong man, you must look at Jesus' own example. How many times did you hear Jesus say, Satan, I bind you? Or demons, I bind you. Have you checked the Bible? This one where he said, except you bind. Did you see him using the word bind? You are a scholar of the Bible. You see him say, I bind. I bind the devil, I bind demons. I take authority over demons. I bind them. I bind them. But look at us running all over the place. I bind, I bind. And you know what? Let me shock you. Most of the time, you are binding something you are bound already. Oh, I, I know you are confused. I know you are confused. The worship we were worshiping today, he's bound already. All, all Jehoshaphat needed was for them to go with the praise and worship. And as they went with the praise and worship, there was a sound on the top of the trees and the enemy was bound. The enemy was immobilized. So even your worship is binding. And your worship and praise is losing. So you know what? Paul and Silas are in the prison and when they had to be loosed from their chains, they didn't say, we lose the chains and we lose the shackles. They just raised praise and worship and the chains dropped. So ladies and gentlemen, your praise and your worship is binding and losing. So you know what? When you are coming to church and you miss the time of praise and worship, you have missed the time of the binding and losing. So when Deborah today was saying, only you can do what no man can do. Only you can do what no man can do. Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do. It's only you. Only you can say what no man can say. Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do. It's only you. Listen. When they were singing that they were binding. But at the time they were binding, you were in your house. And I don't even think they knew they were binding. That is why sometimes they can be singing praise and worship and chewing, chewing up. Because they don't even know the importance. And that is why some of the same people who are to bind will come to the church late. Because they don't even know the significance of their ministry. Binding. How many times did you hear Jesus say, I bind? <laughs> One day he had to bind some people. You, you know the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And he, he is an accuser. And he accused a woman and said, This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And when the demons moved the religious hypocrites, who were filled with the spirit of hypocrisy, to stone the woman to death, and their activity was devilish. When they brought the woman, and Jesus had to bind the spirit of accusation, and the slandering demon of Satan, Jesus didn't say, I bind you slanderers. He wrote on the ground. And as he was writing, he was binding them and binding them and binding them and they were running away he got up now and said woman where are your accusers he bound them by the things he wrote i i i have seen people the other day aaron was giving testimony about one of his friends he brought to me and, it, and he said i prayed less than two minutes have you ever seen me pray very long prayers over people you bring to you have been bringing them every day do i waste my time 30 seconds, maybe. Obedia dear GD. May pump by three hours cry and say, and to buy a fast track, pay as you go. I don't, I don't, no, I don't waste. Listen, 
when you come to me no matter how big the problem is you will never see me start jumping no 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 i used to jump when i was in primary school i cannot be jumping now because of you me wuri wuri na see me anka sa asem to me me wuri wuri ask my wife whether when i'm under pressure i jump around the whole place i don't the only place you see me jumping and running is here and that because over here i jump and run not because i'm desperate i jump and run because it's a gym this is a gym i come to do exercise can't you see i'm wearing fitbit oh we take authority over the devil in the name of jesus we took the devil devil i took you devil i took you devil i took you devil i took you you don't choke him by, by a knife the word of god is a two edged sword and when he came to jesus all jesus said it is it, it is written 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 and he was not dealing with the with demons he was dealing with the devil himself and it is written was enough to bind the devil Listen, the demon troubling you is bound already. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Mike, sometimes by your obedience alone, you are bound the devil, he can't do anything. You know, YV, I believe that there is a certain obedience of obeyed God. When I was something years old, 21, and he said, come to Bogatanga and stay all your life. And I said, yes, sir. And I came, not even knowing what I will eat. The day I obeyed God, the devil was bound. I can tell you today, he lacks authority over me. The Bible said, and having in all readiness to avenge all disobedience when our obedience is complete. When you exercise complete obedience in Christ, the devil cannot do you anything. And I came to tell somebody, you are in the will of God and you are living a life of obedience and the enemy cannot touch you. Come on, shout a yes and praise him. <laughs> oh, am I teaching you anything at all? <laughs> Listen, obedience is a key. To binding the devil. When you obey and sit where you are supposed to sit, no devil can touch you. But when you sit at the wrong place and you are shouting, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you, the devil said, Look at a rebellious person. You know what the Roman centurion said? He said, You are a man under authority. Stand there and speak the word. It will work because I also am a man under authority. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. To that one, come, and he comes. And when I say it, it happens because me, myself, I am a man under authority. Oh, somebody, come and clap your hands. I'm, I'm just, listen, I'm, I'm just teaching you out of your ignorance about binding and losing. Binding. And the thing binding means if you don't use the word bind, you are not binding. So you see them use the word bind like they are in a nika nika. Bind, I bind you, 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 I bind you. And then while they are doing, I bind, I tie you up, I bind you, I tie you up, I bind you, I tie you up. Then they say, Obia, everybody, bind, bind the devil, bind. Bye, bye. Oh Jesus. Ignorance. 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 I'm not saying don't do that. It depends on the amount of energy you have. If you have energy, do it. I, I, I'm 60 something years old. I don't have that kind of energy. I go for the sophisticated mechanism of binding and losing. And the sophisticated mechanism is to walk in the spirit. And when you walk in the spirit, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come on, somebody clap your hands and scream like your voice is yours. Oh, Jesus. Now, now, watch this. When Jesus was defeating principalities and powers, did he say, I bind you? No, he obeyed God. And they hanged him on the cross. And when he died, he screamed, my God. He said, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? And he said, it is finished. And the devil was bound. By the way, when he died, 
who went to pray and bind the spirit of death for him to come out. Look at the way he said it. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it. And when he obeyed God and laid in that grave, that obedience alone was binding and loosing. Listen, we have obeyed God to the point where the devil cannot touch us. Can I hear somebody say an amen? I said you have obeyed God to the point where the devil cannot touch you. And your obedience alone is binding and loosing. Listen, you obeyed God and entered that marriage. The devil cannot touch you. You obeyed God and started that ministry. The devil cannot touch you. You obeyed God and started that business. The devil cannot touch me. Somebody shout, the devil cannot touch me. Now, let's watch Jesus. Let's watch Jesus. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you lose on earth is losing heaven. There is a storm. The storm is about to sink all the disciples. When he got up, if it was you and me and we get up, hey, shall we bind all the spirits in the underworld? All demons in hell. Any demons that are causing the storm. We bind you from the north and bind you from the south and bind you from the east and bind you from the west. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over all these storms. We bind the water molecules in the name of Jesus. And we bind every wave and every storm. We bind. No! He got up and to bind the storm, he only said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Three words and a storm stopped. A storm what? Stop. So binding and losing. Sometimes you don't say I bind and lose. Issue a command. Issue a command. Satan stop. In the name of Jesus. Satan stop. I bind it. I take authority. I bind it. I bind it. I bind it. Sometimes you don't need the word I bind it. I'm not saying it is forbidden to use the word I bind it. But you know what? Repeating it and jumping over all over the place like the prophets of Baal doesn't change anything. Huh? A woman was bound by Satan. How many years? 18 years. Bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. They brought the woman into the presence of Jesus. The Bible said Jesus took his hand, touched the woman and said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. It's a statement. Authoritative statement. Listen to me. You bind by saying what you want to happen. What do you want? Say it and stop all this mantra. We bind, we bind, we bind, we bind, we bind, we bind. Hey, Yakaba Shaka, we bind, we bind. Hey, Kotoni ne Mosaya, Yakaba Diadaka, Yakab. And when we finish, and they ask, they say, and they boom, oh, you boom. Oh, you boom. Jack, you boom. Yeah, boom, sir. I feel your voice, you crack up. Look at, look at the way he was binding things. Go and untie the donkey and bring it. That means go and lose the donkey. But you cannot lose the donkey without binding the strong man. So when you are losing the donkey, the strong man or the owner will come and ask you, saying what do you want? Tell them the master has need of it. The word the master has need of it will bind the man and they will release the donkey. <laughs> Listen, the fact that you are saying Jesus needs it, you are bound the devil. In other words, when you know who sent to you, even by that, you have bound the enemy. Amen. Even by that, you bound the devil. So Jesus is walking up. Listen, nobody did binding and losing more than Jesus. No, Lazarus is dead. The man is in a tomb. Jesus is going to lose him from the grave clothes. They took him to the place of the tomb. And you know how he bound the enemy? <laughs> He bound them and said, roll away the stone. <laughs> Sometimes the way to bind is to tell people to do something impossible. Roll away the stone. And they said, by now he's thinking. By now the man is smelling. He bound them further. I said, roll away the stone. And to lose Lazarus, he didn't say, I'll lose you, I'll lose you. Lazarus! Come forth. Come out. Come out of that place. 
Jesus. Lazarus, just come. Today, I command somebody in the name of Jesus. I lose you from bondage. I lose you from sickness. I lose you from confusion. I lose you from madness. I lose you from depression. I lose you from oppression. I declare unto you in the name of Jesus. Come forth in Jesus' name. Come out of the tomb and come out of the grave and come out of the confusion. Come out of the bondage. Somebody shout an amen three times. Binding. Look at Jesus walking about and binding. Look at the way he bound. Sometimes, tell the person because sometimes you need wisdom to bind the enemy. Now, a woman had a child, she slept, and the child, another woman had a child, and that woman's child died, and the two women appeared before Solomon. Solomon had to bind the woman who was trying to take another person's child. He didn't say, shall we pray? He said, bring me the child and bring me a sword. <laughs> I'm going to divide the child. Immediately, the wicked woman was bound. She made a mistake, fell into the trap. And they gave the child to the right person. Listen, if you are a fool, you can't bind, no matter how much you jump. Am I teaching? Am I, am I preaching? No wonder we keep binding and binding and nothing is binding. Because we are binding in the, in the atmosphere of foolishness. Well, Jimmy said, me bind it, me bind it. Oh, binding why? Wisdom be a new life. No wisdom. No understanding. No wisdom. No wisdom. No wisdom. No wisdom. I'll give you a very good example. You see this week, when the Ghana Bar Association are here and they are doing the meeting in this place and we offered them do the meeting here. They came, they said that they wanted the place and we said, take the place and do your meeting. It is more than binding for 100 years. No, 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 I can tell you. It's more than binding for 100 years because you are going to have 600 lawyers and listen, <coughs> 600 lawyers plus are going to go out of Bogatanga and they are likely to say something favorable about your church. That one alone is binding. That one alone is binding and losing. Now, you may be standing here saying, Oh, you know, we needed the, we, you see, we needed the temple for Wednesday prayer. We needed it for Wednesday prayer. And Pastor Livingston will come and stand at the door, very angry. <laughs> Pastor Livingston, today, don't call me Livingston, I'm a dead stone. I'm a dead stone. Wednesday, we should have been fasting and praying. Daddy has given the place to lawyers. Why well, look? Why well, look? But the glory of God would have fallen here by now. But look, lawyers have taken over all these places. You know what? Pastor feels that sometimes, apart from the prayer, you need an injection of wisdom. An injection of wisdom. An injection of wisdom. Because you know what? Sometimes, to bind the enemy, you need favor. And you can imagine, 600 lawyers, you have favor with them. Look at the kind of favor we have with the police in Bogatanga. The kind of favor we have with the police. Look at the police. The amount of favor we have. Look at the favor. I don't want to go into details. I don't want to go into details. But we decided to partner with the police. And help with this. 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 One of, the thing, one of the people that were very pivotal to the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the apostle was the Roman centurions. The Roman centurions. Jesus had a good relationship with them and his disciples had good relationship with them. That one alone is binding and losing. Wisdom. Am I teaching you anything?
anything at all. You see, binding and losing is not just walking about. I bind this and, and I take authority over this and, and I bind that one. I bind. No. Sometimes, how to, get, how to bind your husband is not pouring gallons of oil on his pillow. Oh, yakados kikibia no kobo kofio. Holo bo 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 bo. Where is my anointing oil? Kwame, bring me the anointing oil. Oh, holo bo 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 bo. Every witchcraft holding kofi. Every witchcraft holding him. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft, every witchcraft. Um, God is coming. Now let me stop the prayer. Otherwise, you will hear, uh, Father. You know, in the name of Jesus, this man, too many de demons in him. But Peter said, you don't bind the demons on your husband by pouring oil you bind him with your good works your holiness your righteousness your submission your your purity your gentleness oh your gentleness that when you treat him like that the fear of god will enter him and the person will be bound and submit themselves to god you don't bind them with the kind of binding and losing you think you are doing i pray that god will help us may god deliver us from the spirit of deception in the name of the lord jesus come and clap your hands and scream like i'm talking to you Bind it. Whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you permit, what you for, what you what you bind, what you forbid, what you prohibit, what you stop. Now there are things you and I can stop. One of the things we are stopping at the desert passes is we are stopping poverty. We are stopping poverty. You know what? When I come here in Bogatanga and I put up a screen like this, a giant screen in Bogatanga in a church building, what I am saying is poverty, you cannot stay in the Upper East region. Poverty, you cannot stay in Bogatanga. Poverty, this is not your location. If you want to go to another place, you can go. But as for here, we are bound the spirit of poverty. Come on, shout here. Listen, by your dressing tonight, you are binding poverty. Your shoes are bound in poverty. Your t-shirt is bound in poverty. Your hair is bound in poverty. Your shout is bound in poverty. Come on, shout it! When we build Samek, when we build Samek, Samek House, when we build it, we are bound in poverty. When we build the world headquarters, we are buying them property. Oh, ya gada baga da baga da baga da baga. Yeah. Now, watch this. Watch this. Give me the finished version of Samek House. Finished version of Samek House. Uh, when you put up this you are saying poverty you are not in the upper east region poverty we are banish you from this region somebody that can shout poverty is living your environment come on shout it you see so keep it keep it right here keep it right here you don't bind poverty with we bind poverty we bind poverty we take authority over poverty we bind no do something show something say something build something establish something oh come on scream like your voice listen where where is the end product of eam wealth headquarters this 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 i said this i said this oh ah. come on scream like i'm preaching to you like i'm preaching you something yeah listen you don't break the curse with i break the curse i break the curse i break the curse I... 
Put up this. Put up this. This is what Solomon did. And when Solomon did it, the nations around were silenced. When you put up this, you have silenced Ghana. You have silenced Africa. That is the time you prove that God makes rivers in the desert and he makes a way in the wilderness. Come on, somebody scream like your voice is yours. Come on, shout it like your voice is yours. Yeah! By the time you go to North Bogatanga, not Winkogo, not Tongo, but Balungu. And you put up this building. Seven story building. And they ask, is that the Bank of Ghana office? Is that the office of the SIC? Is that the office of SNIT? And they say, no. It is the office of Fountain Gate Chapel. It's the office of Desert Pastures. It is the office of EAM. It is the office of KIA. By the time this thing goes up like this, we are saying poverty. Your lifespan has ended in our region. Poverty, your days are numbered. I came to tell somebody, and as you see all these buildings coming up, we are binding the spirit of poverty. And as you see the buildings coming up, we are saying poverty your days are numbers poverty you are found poverty you don't live in the upper east region poverty you don't live in Bogatanga poverty you don't live in Navrongo poverty you don't live in Boko poverty you don't live in Dongo come on somebody clap your hands and scream like I'm preaching to you yeah come on shout So sometimes you know what to bind is to make a statement make a statement what I'm tell, saying is that lay down the marker that from now this is it <laughs> we're sitting in Bogatanga when somebody from America shipped to us a whole load of hospital equipment what they are saying is that from Tinge Chapu, EAM, you must have a hospital in Bogatanga. And I see it coming. Do you know that the Desert Pastures International School, there are universities in Accra who don't have that facility? This. There are mushroom universities in Accra who don't have this. We only call it by sea. In Bogatanga, we just call it Fountain Gate International School up to JHS. Because even our SS will be nicer than this. Our university will be nicer than this. If you clap, clap. If you don't want to clap, stay where you are. I will see you another time. But if you are flowing with me and you are moving with me, come on, give a big clap. Come on, shout it like your voice is yours. and give them a boho. Anytime they are drinking the water, the water will be a witness against them. Dig a boho. Am I talking to somebody? Dig a boho. Go there. Do oral health synthesization. Go there. Do something. Give them hospital equipment. Everything is binding. Because you know there are these people that are walking about and these churches are doing nothing. And these churches are doing nothing. And these churches are doing nothing. You don't bind them by staying in 
the church room and binding them take them hospital equipment take them PPEs go there and show the love of God and when you do that you are binding the enemy come on scream like I'm talking to you and then and then and then those of you who are punyat punyat somebody in London tell somebody punyat Somebody in America tell another person punyat. Yamba am punyat. Punyat. Noela, you know punyat. Stomach direction. Christians who think about only their stomach. Sometimes when you walk out of the church and you go and help the needy outside the church. Eh, we are sitting here and we are hungry. And they, I mean, they not give us the food. And they carry out the food. And when they gave it to unbelievers outside, and the unbelievers are eating outside, and those of us who are in the church, hunger is killing us. We are binding the enemy. Look at what he said. If your enemy is hungry, give them food, because by so doing, you heap of coals of fire on their head. That is one way to bind and to lose. Come on, clap your hands and scream it like your voice is yours. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, our this is binding. Do you know that the en number of enemies in Yikine who cannot speak again? Do you know the number of enemies in Yikine that this building stopped their mouths and this food stopped their mouths? I am fed up with empty Christianity and Christianity that is baptized and immersed in Jacob. We bind, we take authority in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody tie up the enemy, tie up the enemy, tie up the enemy, tie up the enemy. And we are very busy tying up and nothing is tying up. So Jesus sitting in the temple and Jesus is in the synagogue and Jesus is there. All of a sudden Jesus is teaching. Let's go there. And Jesus is teaching in their synagogues on the Sabbath. And when you teach on the Sabbath, you are causing major problems. Especially if you intend to heal. And the Bible said, and behold, there was a woman there which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. So this woman is bowed together. Bound. Jesus had to lose this woman. But to lose the woman, he must first of all bind the strong man. And the strong man in this synagogue is called the spirit of infirmity. The spirit which has bound up the woman. But the woman was not only bound by the spirit of infirmity. This woman was bound by the laws of the Pharisees. So, when Jesus saw her, he called her unto her. And he said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. How did he lose? He didn't say, shall we pray and lose? Shall we bind and lose? No, he just said it. He just said it. He just said it. Somebody say he just said it. Come on, say it. he just said it. Today, can you just say something? Can you just say, I'm loose from poverty. I am loose from unemployment. I am loose from confusion. I am loose from bondage. I am loose from depression. I am loose from oppression. I am loose from obsession. I am loose from single life. I want to marry it. And I'm loose from that bondage. In the name of Jesus. Come and clap your hands. Shout it and praise the name of Jesus. I am loose. I am loose. I am loose. He said, Woman, thou art loosed from this your infirmity. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. The day I stood in this building and said, I will never leave Bogatanga. That was it. Now, listen. No devil can do anything about it. No, it's finished. It's a statement. Today, may you make a statement of finality. Listen. There are words I have spoken about hospital admission in Bogatanga. I have spoken words. And my wife knows the words. So, Pastor Prince, you know what? It doesn't happen. 
that is how corona i came and stood here one and a half years and i was on my feet and i didn't miss even one service because you know what there is a word i have spoken i came to ask you concerning your prosperity concerning your health concerning your blessing what have you said what have you said <laughs> what have you said what have you said right now I'm writing my book number 99. I am on a chapter I call Power. And I said, I will finish writing the book end of September. We will edit it throughout no October. November, it will go to the printers. Did I pray about it? No, I said it. Did I pray about it? No. I won't said it and I know I have the mind of Christ uh, you see and the lazy people this is the way they walk you see if it is the will of God then I'll finish writing the book but if it is not the will of God then it, no 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 what do I want I want by 31st of December I should add two more books to my 98 books and they will become 100 by the 31st of December this is what I have said and what I bind on earth is bound in heaven and what I lose on earth is loose in heaven listen to me it is not about God it is about you so you know what Pastor Mike today I, was, I have preached three times today yesterday I was not studying my notes to preach today I was writing my book yesterday because by Friday night intentionally I shipped off all my notes for today on Friday night so that Saturday I will write, write the book this one no be prayer topic this one be medulla oblongata waiting day for your head inside if it kept work or brain where do you they carry make you not talk we are blaming God for things God has done baptize ourselves in the lime juice of religion am I talking to somebody don't I believe God I believe him absolutely Oh, if I had gone to God to ask him what is your will between now and December concerning writing books, he would tell me write 10 because I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think or ask. So you know what? Even my two is an understatement of what God wants to do. Am I teaching anybody? Am I preaching? I, am I preaching? He said, look, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Listen, if you lift up your voice today and say this is the last day I will be poor in my life, that is the way it will be. You know what? I sat down with Francis and Rebo, a man of God. The day I sat down with Francis and I sat down with Raymond. The balance in the account to build Nam Memorial Hall was not up to 20,000 Ghana cities. I sat down with them, Manui. Among all the buildings we are building, the one which has no financial problem at all is the one in the village. And they smiled. They said, Daddy, we knew. We knew you would just do it. I look at them and say, You people, all ye fools and slow of heart. <laughs> she knew. They just believed it because you see, I spoke it by faith. But you see, was I deceiving them? No, I really believed it. You see the roofing sheet going up the auditorium. And I can tell you, Pastor Prince, that day when I said it like that, that is how it has been. No? Noella, it has never lacked money. And I can tell you by the grace of God where I'm standing now, everything to finish this building is ready. Everything. From window to tiles to everything is ready. You shall have whatsoever you say. 
America. I was preaching. Today I was sharing a testimony with mommy. The Lord led me to call a pastor's son. A white man's son. I called this white man's son. I said, take 2,000 guys. Take 2,000 dollars. 1,000 for you. 1,000 for your brother. And this is an associate pastor in the church. I want you to honor him with 2,000. Bring the money tomorrow. I'll put it in his hand. And pray for him. And God will break every financial limitation over your life. The following day, the young man said they have put some money together, $2,000. He came and put it in my hand. I prayed over it. I said, give it to your big brother, the associate pastor. He gave it. Today, his pastor, his father, sent me a text and said, Eastwood, I wanted to tell you something. That when you led my son to sow 2000 into pastor so-and-so's life, a few weeks after somebody just walked up to my son and handed over to my son twenty thousand dollars and listen when i go to them places like america no 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 listen i don't go there to sing bogatanga song of poverty no 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 you would think bogatanga is full of holy gold I tell them here, this place is a blessed land. I talk huge. <laughs> one day, one of them made a mistake and followed me to a shop to buy jeans. He bought me this one. And I decided to buy my jeans. I bought America to do my titty king tada. Tendiki yenni. Eleven. This American was following me. Pastor, is that all you want? I said, Yeah, that's it. I'm fine. I went to the till, I was ready to pay. Then the man at the till told me. Sir, it's all right. I said, well, it's okay. He said, your friend just covered it. Right. Can you imagine? If I had gone there with poverty mentality, and I had seen one, and how much is these jeans? And they mentioned the price, and I said, Jesus, Makia. Bologatanga Bia or Makia, Makia. I would have come out with only one pair of jeans. But because I read the scripture, which says, open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. God bless me according to the extent of my desire. Jesus. Listen. You bind poverty. Not by shouting, I bind you poverty. Change your lifestyle. When you change your lifestyle, you bind poverty. The day you stop bargaining over week, you will bind poverty. How much is this week? They say 25. Barahe. 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 When you stop barahe, you are binding poverty. Because barahe is the language of poverty. Then lose. Listen, I, I, I know I, I know it's good to pour anointing oil. But sometimes instead of just pouring the anointing oil and just walking about there confusing yourself, when you pour the oil, just say it is done. No demon can enter this house in then sometimes you know, just take the anointing oil, pour it and say now no demon crosses this line and go back and go and sleep. You are bound, you are bound, you are bound, you are bound. I remember, I remember the day I, the, I've told you this story many, many times. I preach in England and the principality of a woman followed me. And I'm telling you real principality because I could see her the way I'm seeing Pastor Prince. I'm sitting there and I'm signing books. She came and stood in front of me. Physically, everybody saw her. When she stood there, this is London. Everybody backed off. Look, I was signing books for many people. Everybody just went like that. And they were looking at me and this woman alone, wearing black dress, red overcoat. Her fingernails, the cutest, were black. Lipstick was black. Eyeshadow, black. 
and the eyelashes. <laughs> and she put a book in front of me to sign. I didn't sign it. I looked at her and I said, who are you and where do you live? She said, I cannot tell you. Then I responded and said, I know. What is your name? She said, I cannot tell you. I said that one too, I know. By that time, everybody was standing and looking at me. I didn't sign the book. You know what she did? She left the book on the table and she said, see you later. And I also tell her, I will see you soon. See you later. I said, I'll see you soon. And I knew I will see her again. Because I knew this woman is a fallen angel. This is not a normal human being. When I went back to the hotel, Chesant Marriott Hotel on that day, I finished washing down. I lay on the bed, put my head on the pillow to pray. Then I heard some noise in the room. I heard a noise and a sound. And then I felt something like some wind we had entered the room. When I turned, the woman was standing in the corner. The door was locked. She's standing in the corner and looking at me. And I looked at her in the corner. I said, oh, you followed me here. I said, then I'm talking to the thing. I said, it is about 12 midnight. You followed me here. And I told her, see, when you saw me in the church, I was preaching. I'm tired. I want to sleep. I'm going to sleep. When you stand there and you are tired, you can leave. Somebody said, did I pray? No. I took the duvet. I covered my head. And I went to sleep. But the word I spoke was, when you are tired, leave. I didn't say you can attack me because I knew you can't attack me. But when you stand and you are tired, you can leave. I opened my eyes around 3 a.m. She was gone. I have never seen her again all my life. You shall have whatsoever you say. You shall have whatsoever you say. You shall have whatsoever you say. I need somebody to stand to your feet right now. He said, and woman, you are loose from your infirmity. When you bind and you loose, anything can happen. Somebody lift up your voice right now. Listen. Anything you don't like in your life, name it and say, I forbid you. I forbid you, I prohibit you. Name them five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the things you are losing upon your life, lose them. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody go. Fellowship to partnership. Justice. Let justice do.
want you to prepare for an unprecedented one week. In the next one week, lawyers will be meeting in this place. We will come to church Tuesday night and we'll be here for KIA on Thursday. But this place is practically going to be fallow. You are going to speak tonight and you will receive more miracles than any other week of your life since the year started. You know what I want you to do? Just lift up your hand and lose upon yourself anything you want. And lose yourself from anything you don't want in your life. Father, I lose my blessing upon my life. I lose my favor upon my life. I lose myself from any sickness. Come on, declare it in the name of Jesus. I'm walking out of indebtedness. I'm walking out of indebtedness. I'm walking out of indebtedness. This week, my debt is paid off in the name of Jesus. My debt is paid off. Where is now? Whilst we are praying, listen to what God told me. God told me tonight that whilst we are praying and ministering. The atmosphere around people is going to change. Listen, the atmosphere around you, that, that, that tension, that cloud of heaviness is about to be lifted. And as we are praying, you will sense all of a sudden that some heaviness that has been on you for years has just departed from you. Those of you that are online, Today we need the testimonies quick, 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 quick. Because sometimes the testimonies delay in coming to us. And by the time we are closing, that is the time a lot of the mighty testimonies are coming. William had some testimonies from the last meeting we did. And, and there was one he came to share with me later. But by that time we are gone, I want you to send your testimonies quickly. The atmosphere is about to change. The atmosphere is about to change as you lose things upon yourself. Now, Minister Dra, you came with your daughter to see me in the office. Can you bring that your daughter back here? I've forgotten the name. What name? Huh? The last. Oh, Jesus. The Lord said for me to just lay hands on her. You also come. And lose upon her. Lose upon her. You, you know, sometimes when, when I'm sitting in the office, I tell them every day they don't get me. Today, you see, Mr. Dra, when I finish service and I sit in that office, anybody who comes to talk to me, about 90% of what you tell me, I can't get you. I don't understand you. You will repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and it's not entering because when I finish this thing and go, sometimes it takes me about two hours, three hours. For me to come back to normal. You may see me, I'm saying many things. I may even be joking. But I'm not, I'm not there. You are wasting precious time. I remember you brought her. But I promise you. Anything you told me about her, I don't remember. Apart from the fact that she came to say hello. As for the hello, I remember. I was sitting there when my brother Alex picked our junior brother John and came with him with paper. And they are sitting in front of me with certificate. And I asked my brother, what is it? My younger brother. He explained it once. I didn't get it. Explained it two. I didn't get it. Explained it three. I didn't get it. I said, Alex, you know what? Go and call Pastor Solo and come with him. And when they came, I said, Pastor Solo, these people are speaking grammar. Go with them. Catch everything this young man is saying. And tell me later. Because they said, the Asema Okano, 
So you see, when you finish talking to me, I prayed. And when I'm praying and the spirit has not said, it is different from when I hear from heaven and release a word. The blessing loose from heaven. Receive it. And your wife. What she would do.